What is up guys? Welcome back. I am so excited to share this video with you. Since, you know, kind of doing my own thing, YouTube has started to become fun again. Social media has started to become fun again, and that's what we're all in it for, right? It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be entertaining. It's supposed to be a good time. But I digress, this video is a long time coming. I moved to Nashville about six months ago. Holy crap, it's been six months already. I moved to Nashville six months ago and we have been just kind of redoing this house so much. Literally every waking moment I spend at home, some thought of, hey, we have to fix this, we need to replace that, we need to do this, do that, do the other thing. And finally, after six months, things are starting to come together. My two favorite places that this house was going to have for me are just about finished. I mean, finished enough that like, I'll show it to you. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm too excited. Let's just, let's just go. Uh, house update, episode one, yeah. As far as my excitement for the two of these things, I think it's a tie, even though I can do a lot more with one than the other. If you know me and you've known me for a while, you'll know why it's a tie. As I lay on it, first thing is this deadlift platform. Everything I have from here on out was from Rogue, so if you wanna just like look it up to see all the specs and stuff, you can. But this is, I believe, the four by eight deadlift platform. I didn't need a four by six. I'm not like throwing stuff for, you know, power lifting and I don't need to drop stuff from higher than hip height, I guess, even if I'm gonna drop stuff, which I'm a power lifter, not a crossfitter. I don't drop stuff, I bring it down to the ground sometimes at a higher rate of speed than I'd like, but I still bring it down. But there's a lot of cool things about this particular deadlift platform and any deadlift platform if you're kind of into that sort of thing. The first thing is it's not gonna ruin your floors. Now, before any of this got here, I laid this rubber flooring down that you can see, where's my, there we go, all this stuff. This is just basic rubber flooring that wasn't here when we got here. Now, of course, we epoxied the floor of our garage on like day two, but this is another layer of protection. And then the deadlift platform itself is another layer of protection still that is designed for exactly the heavy stuff that I'm gonna put on it. The other thing that's cool is these pegs. Those pegs allow for a little bit different versions of training. They allow me to put some of those resistance bands that you see over there on them and over the bar so that when I'm at the top of a movement or a deadlift, it tries to pull me down. So it's heavier at the top than it is the bottom. Now, why would you do that? It gives you a different resistance profile and sometimes if all you do is deadlift, you need something a little bit different, makes it a little bit more fun, makes it a little bit more difficult. And when you're into weightlifting as much as I am, you enjoy the different, you enjoy the difficult, you enjoy the new challenges. Now, what would this video be if I didn't give you some form of demonstration? Now, before you guys come at me, these are my demonstration weights. These are not like my actual working weights. And you notice at the top of that deadlift, how the bands got really stiff. That makes it a lot heavier at the top of the movement, makes it a lot more difficult. I take the bands off, I pick the weight up, there we go. It's a lot lighter at the top of the movement, much, much easier. To and behind me sits the other monstrosity of this room, the rack. This monstrosity, along with the adjustable bench you see there, is the Rogue Monster Light Rack. I thought it was going to be much bigger and much more egregious than it actually is. It's big, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't have that big a footprint. A couple cool things about this particular squat rack is that it has these arms to catch the bar in case I almost drop it on myself to kill myself. And it also has these pins, kind of like the uh, deadlift platform does. And yes, I did get two bars, and there is a reason I got two bars. First of all, this one is fine. This is not a particularly hefty knurl. It doesn't really get in your hands like you need it to on a deadlift, for example. And it also doesn't have this center knurl here, so it doesn't like catch on your back when you're squatting particularly heavy. It's not supposed to, but it's like an extra layer of just kind of support and you know keeps the bar where it's supposed to be. It's a nice bar, it's a very generic rogue bar, but I also did get this one. Now it currently lives on the deadlift platform, but here it is. Now I wish this part came in black, I don't think it does, or if it does, I didn't see it because I'm lazy and I just wanted the new one, but this is a lot harder. It's a lot, I don't know, deeper of a neural actually, so it digs into your hands a little bit. Now, some people think that that can hurt, and it can if you're really deadlifting a lot, really lifting a lot. If you have very, very delicate hands to begin with, it can be a little bit uncomfortable. You do get used to it. I have giant calluses on my hands from exactly this. This one also has the center knurl right here so that when I'm squatting, it kind of sits nicely on my back. Now, I obviously have to talk about the plates I got because I did kind of for two reasons. The first plates live down here. These are the bumpers. The bumpers are important because they're a little bit taller than the actual metal plates. Why they're taller, I'm not sure. I think it's with like 
competing and they have to be a certain height or whatever it is, I don't know. But I just know they're a little bit taller. It is great to have those just a little bit taller because the other 45 pound plates won't hit the ground. And if you know what it's like to put on more plates of the same size, it's a huge pain. This makes it a little bit less of a pain. For the rest of the plates, I went with metal for two reasons. One, I believe they were the cheapest on the website. I could be wrong. I remember them being the cheapest on the website. I don't actually know off the top of my head. Don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure they were cheapest. These sorts of plates are a little bit more money than you probably expect. And when you're getting as much weight as I got, that adds up pretty quickly. Before we get to reason number two, I'm gonna show you exactly how many metal plates I got. I got 10 45 pound plates. It's exactly the same on that side, so I'm not gonna show you both. 10 45 pound plates, two 25 pound plates, two 10s, two fives, and two two and a halves. And back down here to my friends, the bumpers, two 45s and two 25s. The second reason, if you have been going to the gym for a long time, you certainly understand how satisfying two metal plates colliding actually is. Oh, so satisfying. I do love that sound, but you can see at the top of the movement, the bands are pretty tight. I usually go with heavier bands with the squat just because it's, you know, 75 pounds additionally at the top of the movement with the heavier bands than, you know, the entirety of without the bands. Now, of course, I had to switch it over to the bench. You can see that the arms will catch the bar so I don't kill myself if I can't do the lift. Oh my God, I can't forget. We have two dog beds out here. Yeah, we got two dogs and sometimes we want them to chill with us. So leave the back door open, they can come out. They're not gonna get out because the garage doors are closed, but you know, they can chill. All right, that's the gym. Now I wanna show you the part of the house that I'm certainly most proud of. I'm so glad there's a little bit of light left because I was not super sure if I was gonna get to show you this tonight, but I can, so let's ride. Oh, the moon's out. My God, was that not easy to see. I don't know how big it looks yet on camera, but at the moment, it's pretty big. In Tennessee, the ground is full of rocks and the previous owners decided to put some cinder blocks and some rocks as a retaining wall that was not actually doing anything. It was not built as a retaining wall is supposed to be built. Now, if you'll notice, uh, nope. Yeah, over there, there's a bunch of rocks up there by that tree. There are those rocks lining the entire side of this property. Those are all rocks that I dug up from right below where I'm sitting. Now, underneath those bricks, there is two inches of stone dust. Underneath that stone dust, there is between 10 and six inches of gravel. Now, right there, underneath those bricks is about 10 inches of gravel. Why we chose up there? Because this is the back corner of the property and we want the rain when it rains to go that way. So 10 inches of gravel over there, six inches of gravel over there. When I dug this out, the ground was perfectly, perfectly flat, like laser level, a whole nine yards, totally flat. So what we did is we created the slant from the gravel. A little bit easier. Behind me here, we have a properly functioning retaining wall and uh, extra bricks over there, but a properly functioning retaining wall nonetheless. Now the point of that is to give the whole place a little bit of stability and block, actually block, not like pretend to actually block, all the weight from the dirt up there on that hill. To properly chill on this patio, we have six uh, surprisingly comfortable Adirondack chairs and over here, just a couple of rocking chairs. Wait, nope. There's the other one. All right, we're good. I've also got a wood pile right here, but it's covered because it's gonna rain soon. And the fire pit. This is a solo stove pit. Like somebody who is always ready for a fire, the fire is down there and built. Kyrie's New Year's resolution was to get more comfortable on camera. And what better way to do that than when you don't have to talk. Now, this is one of my favorite things to do is just be outside with the fire, under the stars, chilling with the dogs. Now, of course I had to do work at this point, but you know, get the good with the bad. The dogs don't get in the fire because it's fire and they know not to get in it, but they do get up in our faces. Those lights the dogs wear are just one of many light and reflective sources. We have the dogs and us wear when we're on walks. We live on a busy street, so you know, better to be seen than not seen. But we and they love it out there. Going over everything I did for that retaining wall and those bricks and that patio, <laughs> it made my hands hurt a little bit. I can't stress enough how hot it was here over the summer, just using the ax Ugh, lots and lots of hard work. I love doing manual labor like that because I get paid to think all day. You know, I don't really use my body that much other than going to the gym. So it's really nice to get that kind of switch. But that is it for this update. There is so much left to not only do for the house, but update you on when that stuff gets done. There's a lot of stuff that will come to fruition in about the next month or so. So be ready for episode two around then. 
until then, I will catch you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.